Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to video number 16 on tests part three, where we are going to implement a data frame test. Now, in the previous videos, we have explored what a unit test is, and we have refactored our code to be testable. Today, we want to test the transformations that we have in our testable unit, whether they are producing the correct results. Therefore, we would like to create a test data frame so that we know exactly what data we have in our test case and then call our unit with this test data and use assertions on the returned result to prove that our produced result is actually correct. Now here we are going to instantiate a date because we have a date in our test data and therefore we would have to add another JVM option such that um, Spark runs with Java 17. Now let's get started. All right, I'm in our test class. And the first thing we have to do here is to instantiate a Spark session as well as we would like to use Spark in our test code. So I would say private val Spark um, and instantiate a new Spark session as we have done in our main as well. So we have to import and then use our builder to instantiate the Spark session. So we have to pass in an app name. I would just call it first test and then also provide the master configuration, uh, configuration, which will be local asterisk and then basically call get or create to retrieve the actual Spark session. Now we can move this one, uh, one line up and then we have to instantiate a data frame which we can pass into our unit here. To recall, our unit that we want to test is highest closing prices per year, and it takes as parameter a data frame and returns a data frame. Now, what we need to do is to instantiate a data frame with test data. Now, we will use only three columns, which will be date, open, and close prices as our functionality only uses the date and the close price, but we will also pass in the opening price so that we can see that the entire row for each year is returned. Now let's create a data frame and call it uh, test data. And we can create a data frame using the Spark session. If you recall, the, the readers are also part of the Spark session. And the same, we can, uh, the same way we can also create a data frame. And here we have multiple options. So this method is overloaded. And you can see here, we can create a data frame from a list, which is basically a Java list by passing in the schema as well. However, I would like to use another method because I don't want to transform our um, list of test points into a Java list. Therefore, I will use um, the method where we can pass in a sequence of rows, for example, and an encoder, and we can create an encoder simply from our schema. Here we go, that's the one. So we have to pass in an encoder implicitly and then also a sequence of the same type T. All right, now the first thing I would like to do is to create a list of the test points we wanna have. Now let's call this one the test df and here we have the test rows which is going to be a list or a sequence and in here we instantiate a couple of rows and we would like to have rows with a particular schema and now let me go ahead and define the schema here as well for this test of this unit and the schema we can uh, create by using the struct struct type which is also from the sql data types and it's basically a generic struct you can think of it as being an object and within the struct uh, in the constructor or in the apply method we can pass in struct fields a sequence of struct fields and that's exactly what we want to do so in here we have a couple of struct fields so we actually have a sequence of struct fields so now we need the struct field and import it. And the struct field, as we can see here, has a name, a data type, and a Boolean flag, whether it's nullable or not. So here we have the name, so we have one column date. Then we need a data type, so it's a date 
type, which we have seen in the Spark documentation. Now we have uh, to import the correct type here, and we can see here it's from Arc, Org, Apache, Spark, SQL types, date type, and nullable should be true. And we have, would like to have three fields. So here we have the opening price. It's not a date, but rather a double double type and we also have the close which is our, oh, also going to be a double type and now we have to import this one import class and then sql types double type and let's use named boolean uh, parameters here um, as the id suggests because it's better readable then and like this we have constructed our schema programmatically as you may recall in our main application we have inferred the schema so this is, has happened in the sql reader and the csv reader but here we have to specify it as we are um yeah generating rows and the row has to have a schema now here we, he would like to have a row let's import this generic uh, type row and then we need to pass in uh, a var arc of the fields we would like to have. So if I press con command and um, P, we can see that the row apply method actually takes a number of values, any number of values. That's how a row is instantiated. Now here we pass in a date first, and this should be, um, let me import this. We are going to use java.sql.date and we construct one date by using the value of and we can pass in a string which is of the ESO format for a date. So for example, we could say 2022 and then January and then 12th. And then we have to pass in two doubles for the open and the close price. So the open price should be one and the close price should be two. And like this, we have constructed a row containing one date or yes, SQL date and two doubles. And now we would like to have some sample data more, let's say three. Um, the other one should be of year 2023 and then months March and then 1st of March, for my example. And then 2023, um, January 12th should be, ha should having an closing price which is going to be our third parameter here of three so that we would like to retrieve this row actually from our testable unit or to test unit all right so having these three data points we would like to retrieve actually two rows one for 2022 and one for 2023 and we would like to see the row with the highest close price so here it would be 2023 and then january 12th because it has a closing uh, price of three. All right, so the next step would be to create an actual data frame from our test data. Now in here, we need a sequence um, of data points um, of type T. And in our case, the type T is row. So here we pass in the test rows. And now the IDE complains that there is no encoder, no implicit encoder found. So what we need as well here is an implicit encoder so that Spark knows the schema of um, our data frame or of the data frame it should create. Now what we could do is to um, int um, introduce an implicit, implicit value encoder and it should be an, from encoders. So this is defined in Spark SQL as well as encoders. And then there is already a method for a row encoder and it takes as parameter a schema. So here we pass in the schema and we have an implicit encoder. And now Spark doesn't complain about it anymore because it can find the implicit encoder, which is required for calling this method here. So we can see here that it needs an encoder. All right, now it's complaining also that we should type or add an explicit type to an implicit um, value. So, and that's how we can create a test data frame. So we have a data frame now, and now we can pass this one into our 
to test unit and save the result in a value. Now, if we executed this, Spark would actually yeah, create a data frame and call our unit with this test data and store the resulting data frame in a reference called result. Now, what we want to do is now is to test also whether the result is correct. So, and I would like to do this by collecting the result into a list of rows. So if we call an action here, collect, it will, it will return an array of rows of the resulting data frame. Now like this, we get a result and let's call it list, even though it's an array, but we make sure, or we make explicit that it's not a data frame anymore, but we have a list of values. And now I would like to define the expected values as well. So expected. So that's the definition of our um, test case. So in the beginning, we have um, specified the test data, which are these three rows. And the expected result should consist of this row and of this row. So that we get one row for every year, which um, is actually the row with the highest closing price for that year. Now we have defined the input data and the expected output data. And now what we have to do is compare this actual output. Let's call this actual, actual rows. And now we would like to assert that the actual rows is the same as the expected rows. And that we can do with matchers in Scala test. So what we can write is um, the actual rows should, should, and that's defined in Scala test, these functions here, um, should contain, and then, yes, it's, we have to import this from Scala test, matchers must contain, and this should, should also be importable, should contain, and then all elements of, and then actually we pass in, we have to pass in a traversable, which is our expected. Now that's our assertion in our test, where we make sure that the result is actually what we expect the unit to produce. And actually, um, all elements of is not sufficient for our test case, because even if it contains all elements of our expected rows, um, this may only be a subset of what is actually in the results. But what we want to have is the same elements as, and the order doesn't matter. There's another function called here, um, same elements in order as, but here we need only same elements as, and then expected. And actually we don't need this parenthesis here. Now that's our assertion for our test. The actual rows returned from our unit should contain the same elements as the expected rows that we have specified. Now, in order to run this test, we will have to add a configuration as well. Now, let me um, just remove these ones and go to our templates again. And now we have Scala test here as a template. And here I've done it already during the yeah, rehearsal of this video. Um, previously, we have added the Java base sun nio.ch all unnamed. Now we have also add the sun util, util calendar um, so that we can access them even though they are not um, public anymore in Java 17. But we have to add this JVM option to execute our test. Now I save this and as it's saved in the template, if I click the run button here now, um, it actually will exe or create a run configuration having these two flags already present. And we will see if our test completes. All right, now it's executing the test. So it has to start this uh, Spark session. That's why it's uh, producing all of these logs here. And then it will actually instantiate the test data frame Get, um, get it into the unit or pass it into the unit and assert the result. And we get now a failing test. And the problem is that we, that 
our array of the um, actual result did not match all elements of the expected result. And the problem is this one here in the back. And this one is actually a additional column that our unit adds. That's why it fails. Because in our unit, we introduce a new column called rank. And then we use it to filter only one particular uh, row for every year. But once we have done the filtering, we can also drop the rank so it's not present in the result anymore. So we drop the rank and then return the result. So now we drop the rank. I can re-execute this um, test here and hopefully it will complete now. So now we can see we have one pass test and there won't be too much output. It, it, it simply says the test is OK. Now, and that's how we can write a unit test for a data frame. So we have to create a data frame containing test data. And for that, we would actually have to specify the schema we would like to have in our data frame. And this data frame we can then pass into our unit that we would like to test, collect the results and then we can have assertions to make sure that the produced result is actually what we have expected. Now, we could um, also add many, many more test cases to verify that our test is working correctly. For example, here we have reduced our data frame to containing particular columns, but what happens if the close price or the date column is not present and so on. Also, we could uh, create a test to assert that our sort, which we have in our test uh, to testable unit, is actually working correctly. That's what we're not doing here. And actually, what I forgot to mention is um, previously we have defined a name for our test, which is not correct anymore. So probably we should name it differently. So for example, we could say um, returns highest closing prices for year. So it's quite important to have a descriptive name for a test so that we can tell directly what's going wrong. Thanks for tuning in and see you in the next video. Bye bye.